White candy striped Lambert trams took 67 guests on a two hour driving tour of the lot, and that's how the world famous studio tour as we know it was born. We started with two guides, two drivers, and one ticket seller working off a booth on Lancaster Boulevard. But from there, the studio tour expanded with fantastical one of a kind Hollywood elements, attractions, shows, and rides until we finally had the theme park you're visiting today. But it all started with us right here at the studio tour. We're making our way down to the first section of the studio, known as the front lot. This is where most of our sound stages are located, and these buildings are where most of our filming takes place. The first sound stage is right in front of us, a little to the left. That is sound stage 12, one of the largest and oldest in the studio. Being one of the oldest, it's been home to incredible productions. For example, Don't lose it. it was Frankenstein's Lab, Dracula's Castle, Scarface's Mansion, all of these scenes on your screens were filmed right here in Soundstage 12 on our left. And it's large enough in there that we can build sets that look like they are outside, inside of the building. Like Whoville from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or this Hawaiian resort from the movie Couples Retreat, which was built in Soundstage 12 with the pool and everything. You can also see what it looks like when it doesn't have a set inside of it. And most of our sound stages look like this. One of them here on the left have the doors open, so you might be able to see into an active sound stage here. Sound stage 11, the first one here, is used for Hacks season 4. Sound stages 9 and 10 are used for Ted season 2. They're working on the TV show with the teddy bear based on the movie. Oh. All the sound stages have a red light. If that red light is flashing or spinning around, it means they're filming. So they're filming season two of Ted right now, which is why I have to turn off the mic. Sound stages seven, eight, and 14 here on the left are used for Bel Air. They just wrapped up season three, which is already streaming on Peacock. That's our modern take on the sitcom from the 90s, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Season four, they just started working on right now. That sound stage there, aside from Bel Air, was used as mission control in the movie Apollo 13, directed by Ron Howard. And it's also where we filmed most of the mobile lab scenes in the movie The Lost World Jurassic Park. For this one here on your screens, when one of the dinosaurs pushes the mobile lab off a cliff, that cliff was actually just the parking structure that's right next to sound stage 14. We decorated it with artificial trees, artificial rocks, even a fake waterfall to make it look like part of the jungle, but that way we could film everything here safely in the studio. Coming up on the right hand side, you're going to see sound stages 16 and 17. Those two are used for the TV show based on a true story. It's one of our Peacock originals starring Kaylee Cuoco and Chris Messina. They're working on season two right now. Season one's already streaming on Peacock. And next door, sound stages 18 and 19 are currently used for a highly confidential production I can't tell you anything about without getting in big, big trouble. But right before that, they were used for a brand new Netflix show called A Man on the Inside. Sorry, Ted Danson and Stephanie Beatrice. That show premieres this November on Netflix, produced by Mike Schur, and based on the Academy Award nominated documentary, Old Agent. Speaking of Academy Awards, Soundstage 19 was also used as the Oval Office in the movie Oppenheimer, directed by Christopher Nolan, our latest Academy Award winner for Best Picture. On the left here, you'll see Ted the teddy bear from the movies Ted, Ted 2, and the TV show Ted. All those buildings behind him used to be permanent dressing rooms to the stars, back in the golden era of film. Stars like Doris Day, Rock Hudson, Jimmy Stewart, and Lucille Ball, who had long-term contracts with our studios. Nowadays, we use trailers as dressing rooms, and those can be placed anywhere closer to where we're filming, so the permanent dressing rooms were turned into production offices. For example, right here we house Illumination Entertainment, the company that brought you Despicable Me, The Minions, The Secret Life of Pets, and the Super Mario Brothers movie. Working title films is housed here as well. Mark Platt Productions, they've made movies like Legally Blonde, La La Land, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and a bunch of Broadway musicals, including Wicked, which celebrated its 20th anniversary on Broadway last year. They're also making the movie for Wicked, starring Cynthia Erivo, Ariana Grande, Michelle Yeoh, and Jeff Goldblum. Part one comes out this Thanksgiving. And if you know the original Broadway musical, you'll recognize their office. Building 5162 has the logo for Wicked painted on a sphere by the entrance, the classic logo with the two witches. Building 5195, also on the left, used to be Alfred Hitchcock's office. His logo is still painted on the wall next to the door. He was known as the master of suspense for his work directing movies like Psycho, Vertigo, and The Birds. 
On the left here, Sound Stage 25, used for the sitcom Lopez versus Lopez, starring George Lopez and his daughter, Maya Lopez. They're still working on season three, but it already premieres October 18 on NBC. It uh, has a live audience for that show. Sound Stage 26, right next door, is being used for a brand new show called St. Dennis Medical. This is a workplace comedy from the same team that brought you Superstore. It's a new set, uh, set up it's set at a hospital called St. Dennis Medical it stars Wendy McClendon Covey and David Allen Greer and it premieres on NBC November 12. With this we've arrived into the back lot to tell you about this here's Jimmy Fallon. We're about to cross the imaginary boundary onto the back lot where we have exterior sets for many outdoor scenes. Over the last 60 years studio tour guests have seen these locations turned into big cities, quiet suburbs, even that guy's hometown. Yeah that guy for countless movies and TV shows. This is Universal's Metro Sets. These sets are used to recreate large cities for film and TV. The first area on the right is known as Brownstone Street. You might recognize it from movies like Bruce Almighty, Gone Girl, or Home Alone 2. That's where Kevin throws bricks at the bandits from the rooftop in that movie. But right now, we are on the road that leads to the most famous part of our Metro sets, Courthouse Square. This is the same street Marty McFly got the time machine to go 88 miles per hour so he could get back home to 1985. Welcome to the Courthouse Square. These sets were used to create Hill Valley in the Back to the Future films. And they represented multiple time periods, 1985, 1955, and the far, far distant future, 2015. To this day, this is one of the most popular sets on Universal Studio Tour. We had a lot of fun making those films here on the lot. I wonder what it would be like to go back to those days. If only we had a time machine. Hey, everybody. Do you think we can get this tram up to 88 miles per hour? And as you can see, the clock tower looks way different right now. We're actually using it as John Hancock High School for the TV show Ted. That show is set in Boston. For that show, they turned this into 1993 Boston. And uh, you can see a few of the sets are still decorated for that show since they're going to be filming here uh, very soon for season two. We have cleaners. We have the Boston Book Exchange over there. There's still a few uh, signage and uh, decorations that are being used for that show, including the main sign on it. Uh, this was also turned into a club in Princeton, New Jersey in the final season of Never Have I Ever on Netflix. And we recently used it for Maxine, starring Mia Goth and produced by A24. Away from our Courthouse Square into the Big Apple, this here is called New York Street, but we don't only use this street as New York. It was recently downtown LA for season three of Bel Air on Peacock. We also used it as uh, San Francisco for a man on the inside, Portland for St. Dennis Medical, and we constantly use it as Boston in the TV show, Ted. Hi everyone, Seth McFarland here, and I'm excited to share with you a behind-the-scenes look at my Peacock original event series, Ted. It's a prequel series set in 1993. And that means our skilled craftspeople had to build a high school, a house, and even recreate downtown Boston as it looked back in the day using exterior sets and facades that you're about to see on the tour. But I should warn you, Ted is intended for mature audiences only. So grown-ups, tell the kids to go in the other room before you watch. Oh, come on! Season one of Ted has been streaming on Peacock for a bit, and if you watch the show, anytime they're outside roaming the streets of Boston, it's just this one street in the studio. They decorate it all sorts of different ways, so it looks like different parts of the city. And those are just some of the more recent productions that are filmed here that I can tell you about. But these sets are also known for movies like Back to the Future, Bruce Almighty, Captain America, The First Avenger, The Amazing Spider-Man, Transformers, The Forever Purge, and most of the Fast and the Furious movies have all filmed here, as well as TV shows like Parent 